Hey there, sixth graders. Mr. Willis here. I'm going to take you on a little journey through time. The year is 1993. Computer-generated dinosaurs just appeared on movie screens for the first time, plaid was becoming strangely cool, and Mr. Willis was a sixth grader who was incredibly excited for his family to buy their first personal computer. Games were pixely, hard drive space was limited, and when it finally achieved internet access two years later, speeds were slow and a single misplaced phone call could ruin your entire session. All that said, this PC was awesome, and it didn't take long for me to realize that I was probably going to make a career out of working with these things. Fast forward um, a few years to today, and a lot has changed. The internet has gone from a novelty to a utility, and is now the most popular option for couples to meet. The computer itself has gone from a device with its own room to a constant companion in your pocket. With all of this change, a new industry has arisen. It is an industry based on competition for your attention and your data. This is the business of social media. Think about how any business works. You have buyers, sellers, and some product or service being exchanged. When you go to a grocery store, you are the buyer. You give the store money, and the store, which is the seller, gives you products like food. Now think about social media. Are you paying anything to be on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram? Clearly you are not the buyer. Yeah, there are some people that get money from sites like YouTube or Instagram, but there are an incredibly small minority of users. So we aren't really the sellers. So how is it that these companies make so much money? The fact is, a huge amount of their income is from selling ads. Yes, as you may have guessed, social media companies are the sellers in this scenario, and the advertisers are the buyers. So where does that leave all of us? We are the product. Social media companies make their money by convincing advertisers that they can give them our attention. The primary goal for any social media site is to keep us looking at it for as long as possible, giving them more chances to put content from advertisers in front of our eyes. For this reason, social media companies have worked hard over the last decade to make their product more and more addictive. The way they do this can be subtle. Here's one example. This guy is Azaraskin. Back in 2006, he had an interesting idea. Don't force the user to ask for more content, just give it to them. He invented something called the infinite scroll. This is why when you start scrolling through posts on social media, you no longer hit a bottom of the page. The app just keeps generating content for as long as you can scroll. In 2019, Mr. Raskin estimated that an extra 200,000 human lifetimes are wasted every day by his invention. Upon reflecting about his invention, Mr. Raskin said, Honestly, I feel like I had to go through depression to come to terms with what technology was doing. So what does this mean? Do we all just need to get off social media? Maybe. Look, I honestly struggle with this myself. With my job, I do a lot on social media, uh, but I've definitely seen a lot of problems with it. And I know that probably most of your teachers use it and all parents and people use it. So it's very hypocritical of us to say, but there's some big questions we probably all need to ask with this. Is it really worth everything we're getting out of it? And uh, I need to pick an easier topic for next year. All indications are that we are going to exist in a world with social media for the foreseeable future. At the very least, you can make yourself more aware of what you are dealing with. For example, one of the phenomenons we see is FOMO, fear of missing out. This manifests in a couple of ways. It's that nagging feeling you get. There's some really important conversation or event or something happening online, and if you don't check in, you're going to miss it. It's why we are so quick to pull out the phone and start scrolling the second we get any downtime. It's also the experience of seeing other people, maybe even friends you know in real life, experiencing something without you. Be honest. The last time you saw a group of your friends doing something on social media and you realized you weren't invited, how did you feel? Understand, FOMO is experienced by a lot of people. It's not that you are actually missing out, it's the fear of it that is getting to you. This is usually a good time to put the device down, step away, and find something else to do. We also need to understand that fake information is now everywhere. Remember, the goal of social media is to keep you watching, and with literally billions of people posting content trying to manage and proofread it all is next to impossible, especially with tools like DeepFake making it possible to create fake videos that are utterly convincing. You need to view everything you see with a skeptical eye. Yeah, another talk to the camera moment. Look, like a lot of folks my age, 
I tend to be really good about being skeptical whenever I'm looking at information that I disagree with. And I need to do better than that. I need to be, and so do you, equally skeptical of information that I agree with as I am of information that I disagree with. And I fully admit, a lot of people from my generation, we don't do a very good job at this. We need you to be better. All right, back up a bit. You may remember me saying social media is an industry based on competition for your attention and your data. I've talked about the attention, but not the data. Everything you do on social media is recorded. Your likes and dislikes, where you go and who you talk to, what kind of videos are the best at holding your attention, and on and on and on. They use this information to help advertisers direct their ads to the people most likely to respond to it. The other day, I looked at a pair of Bluetooth headphones on Amazon. Now every other ad I see on Facebook is for a different brand of headphones. Combine that with an increasing amount of shopping, banking, and other businesses moving online, and you have a wealth of your personal information that could be captured by people with ill intentions. This may not be a new idea, but keeping your account secure is more important than ever. Using a short, easy to identify password is worse than a bad idea at this point, and shorter passwords like five to 10 characters aren't going to cut it either, even if they use special characters. More recent advice from the FBI suggests that length is the key to making a password stronger. Here's a quote. Instead of using a short, complex password that is hard to remember, consider using a longer passphrase. This involves combining multiple words into a long string of at least 15 characters. The extra length of a password makes it harder to crack while also making it easier for you to remember. That said, even if you have an incredible password, it probably isn't enough. Wherever you can, use things like two-step verification that combines your password with receiving a one-time passcode or biometric information to add layers to your security. You can also go into your phone's privacy settings to adjust just how much data each app is able to pull from your device. And I know this may sound like a crazy idea, but actually take time to read some of those privacy statements you always just scroll past and push agree on. How much of your privacy are you willing to give up to access whatever content is in that app? Hey, here's something else to think about. When you go to post on any of these sites, do you think about how it will affect your ability to get a job or get into a particular school? You are putting all this data out there, and believe me, people are looking at it. The list of people who have lost jobs or never received a job because of what they do online is long. All right, this video is already longer than I planned, and I feel like we are barely scratching the surface, so let's wrap it up and bring a few things into focus. Social media is here. It is a part of our world, and it is something with which you will need to deal. I implore you to interact with open eyes. Social media apps want you to be addicted. They want as much data from you as they can get. You need to learn where to place limits, and you need to learn to cope with what you will encounter. Social media isn't everything. You can still read books, go outside, play sports, sing, dance, or take up a hobby. Despite all the fun that can be had on social media, nothing beats doing one or more of those with a good friend in real life. Social media has a weird way of connecting us all while at the same time leaving many of us feeling lonely and left out. I want you to know that there are people who care for you. Those teachers that are with you in the room right now, they care for you. Other people at your school, like your principal, your counselor, your nurse, even your humble tech guy, we all care for you. Find someone that you can talk to about this stuff. If you don't have that person at home, any of those people that I just mentioned, including me, would be more than happy to talk to you. It can be a big world out there, but you are not alone.